The importance of trees has never been more apparent. They have a myriad of different benefits to wildlife, plant life and people. They regulate the climate, improve flow and quality of water, reduce air pollution and conserve our soil, which helps us to adapt to climate change. The point is this, we need trees. Trees are essential to life, but are our trees safe? So, Paul, you work for the Woodland Trust. We only have 33% of public forests remaining in the UK at the moment. So what's happening with the government situation now? Well, the government obviously backtracked on their plan to just sell it all off. They've kind of kicked it into touch, given it to a forestry panel to look at. And at the moment, there's an open consultation going on with that forestry panel. And we're urging the public through our Save Ancient Forests for Everyone campaign to send their views forward to the panel to get across to them how important these ancient woodlands are to us. Because the key issues are we have to save and protect the ancient woodland we have. And we have to restore those sites that are still restorable. And those are the key planks to our campaign that we're pushing the government to do. So we would urge people to get involved in that. Amazingly, we only have 4% of ancient woodland left. How did this happen? How did this come about? Well, it's been lost over the years to development, to new forestry commission plantations, where they've got rid of our beautiful ancient woodland and replaced it with conifers. Since 1930, the amount of ancient woodland left in the country has halved. So we had 8% in 1930, and we've lost half of it. And it's mainly road building, town development, and, of course, forestry commission cutting down the beautiful ancient trees like we have around us here and replacing them with conifer. But of course those sites can still be saved and that's one of the big things we're campaigning for is to return those to broadleaf woodland because you can recreate ancient woodland. You can't make new ancient woodland on a barren site but mm. on those sites you can still return them to ancient woodland conditions. An example of this is Northfield Wood in Suffolk, where we have a group of volunteers who've been working for the last 20 years to restore what had become a conifer plantation under the Forestry Commission into something approaching ancient woodland. The work they've done there is absolutely fantastic and the results are breathtaking. We've actually got orchids have reappeared, we've had bluebells come back, we've got primroses come back and we've got native trees growing all over the place. Birdsong has returned to the area speak to any of the locals and they'll just go on about how terrific it is, what a fantastic job's been done there. We could do this for all of these restorable sites. We can make a real significant increase in the amount of ancient woodland in this country, but we need everybody to club together to put the pressure on the government to get this done. There's an ancient woodland down the road from us here in Kent called Oaken Wood. Now I understand that that's under imminent threat of demolition. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yes, Gallagher Quarries, who have already got a quarry on the site, have sought permission and been granted it by Kent County Council to expand the quarry by a further 36 hectares of ancient woodland on that site. The only hope left now is that the government will call it in. Now, they claim to be one of the greenest governments ever. This is a real chance for them to prove themselves and call it in. And if they don't call it in, we will be challenging that decision in the High Court. So, Blue, Hello, I've been waiting to meet you. Lovely to meet you. So, tell me a bit more about yourself. I can see you're an artist. Yes, I am paint trees, so I'm a woodland artist. And when I was a little girl, um, I grew up in a house surrounded by woodland, always inspired by what was around me, always collecting things, leaves, drawing them, sketching them. I notice from your paintings that the trees don't have leaves on them. Why is that? Well, initially I began painting the trees without leaves on. Most of my work has been like that. I've always been drawn to the structure and shape of the branches and the trunk and the, and the roots and how they are connected to the skies and heaven and also grounded to earth. And I've also painted them to show their vulnerability um, because of the effects of climate change. Within my work, I use all sorts of natural organic materials that I've collected from the woodland, such as press leaves, twigs, things from the earth. Do you think it's important for us to preserve our ancient woodlands? Absolutely, I think it's imperative. They've given us so much of our heritage and history. They provide so much for wildlife 
and they are spiritual beings and they hold wonderful energy and wisdom. Why a tree is important to me? Because I can't live without them. I literally can't live without them. I can't live without them at an emotional and aesthetic level because I adore them and because they're beautiful. And of course, physically, I can't live without them because I wouldn't be able to breathe. When you really love being in the forest and you love being in woodland, then when that's threatened or damaged, somehow you feel it within yourself. And it's very uncomfortable, it's a very painful feeling. So, so I think all each of us can do really is try in our own way. We can have a, a wide circle of uh, concern, as it were, for the whole earth and the whole planet. And then there's, the, there's a smaller circle of what we can actually do. And however small that is, it doesn't matter. The fact is each of us can do something, whether that's planting a tree or joining a campaign, signing a petition, mm -hmm. whatever it is, uh, we, we should do it. How do you feel about the fact that we've only got 4% of ancient woodland left here in the UK? In a sense, the 4% that we have is immeasurably precious. But I think what is also terribly important is that we now start to protect, manage and create the ancient woodland of the future. We can do that. Um, it just takes imagination, courage and will. Um, and so that we can leave a legacy for those human beings coming on afterwards. I think attitudes within society have changed, technology and government has changed, and therefore we don't appreciate the woodland as we should. And even our children have become born with a disconnection. They resort to playing on the computer, watching TV, being on game station, instead of being outside here, surrounded by the trees. When I come into a woodland, I become small again. And I become a child. I can play and imagine. What you experience is a natural grandeur. And not the grandeur of a city, not a man-made environment. It's a natural grandeur, which is incredibly spiritually uplifting and educating, and there is a freedom which children can have here. Once you've got it, once you've connected with it, once you've tasted it, you become a different human being because you've allowed the whole natural wonder of the world into your soul, and that does something to each one of us. And when that happens as a child, as if I was lucky enough it happened to me, it does something quite wonderful to us. So if you feel motivated, inspired and awakened to the beauty and importance of trees, our public forests and ancient woodlands, then log on to the Woodland Trust website and check out some of their campaigns. And if you don't want to lose any more of our public forests, then make your voice heard in their Have Your Say campaign. Your emailed comment will go directly to the government's independent panel. So in the simple words of Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. <laughs>